What's up, guys? So today we're going to be talking about Marvel Future Revolution and how to not suck at it. So let's get into it. All right, so today we're going to be talking about eight essential new player tips for Marvel Future Revolution. So let me start by introducing myself. If you're not already familiar, my name is Casino, and I stream Marvel Future Revolution pretty much every day on Twitch. I was one of the first 10 players in the world to achieve a level 100 character, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe I'm currently ranked in the top 100 across all game modes. But yeah, and I tend to really favor PvP, so you can see I put a little bit more into Omega War and Dimensional Duel right now. But uh, I also was able to Put this list together by talking to a lot of the late game players in this game. I talked to a lot of the players that have level 100 on other characters and by learning from each other's missteps and essentially sharing advice, we're able to put together a really, really solid list of tips. So, in no particular order. Tip number one, make use of your squad storage and your alt. So one of the first things that we hear from new players is that they run out of inventory space. Now you can purchase additional inventory slots. As you can see on this screen at the bottom, there's a little plus sign and you can actually purchase up to 250 inventory slots for diamonds, but you certainly do not have to do that. There is another built-in excellent storage system that you can use to essentially have a very, very big inventory. And that is the squad storage. So you go here to squad and then at the bottom storage. And the beauty of this storage is that you can transfer items between characters, but that storage itself has another 100 inventory slots, which you can also expand for diamonds. So you can just use that as extra storage space. And if you run out of storage space even there, you can start unloading some of your materials onto your alts. So you should never really actually have any inventory issues because you can just load up your storage and then you can pull stuff out of your storage with your alts. Tip number two, refresh your blitzes and raids daily for diamonds. I'll show you what I mean. So once you complete your blitzes, which you can do three times every day, you can actually pay diamonds to get three more attempts where you'll get rewards. You can see here it says reward count zero out of three, but there's a little plus sign. You go there, you can actually pay diamonds. So we'll buy this one here. And now we have refreshed that reward count. You can do that up to three times for each blitz. I recommend only doing it for the top blitz that you can do, maybe the top blitz and the one below that. Uh, and definitely, definitely do it all three times for the raid for the day. I'm getting a lot of questions about what players should be spending their diamonds on. Hands down, top priority, daily blitz and raid refreshes. Tip number three, don't dismantle costumes. It might seem counterintuitive when you see a bunch of one star and two star garbage costume items and you're thinking, I'm not gonna use this. The stuff I have, the stats are way better. I'm not even trying to build that set. I would just rather have the gold and the Convergium. However, the actuality of the situation is that you're gonna craft almost all of the gear that you're using for end game play. And to do so, you're going to build it essentially out of weaker gear. So you're gonna need all those one star and two star costume items to combine into one another to make three star and four star and sometimes even sacrificial five-star pieces of gear so that you can ultimately craft really high-level gear that you actually want. So don't dismantle any of your costumes. Tip number four, invite nearby players when doing zone quests. This one's pretty straightforward. If you're in a zone doing a quest where you have to kill a bunch of creatures and you see any other players nearby, just invite them into a party with you. You can leave the party at any time, but if they're in the party, even if they accidentally kill some of the same creatures, you will get credit for their kills. And the real rewards for the quests aren't from the creature kills, they're from completing the quest. The faster you can do that, the faster you can move on and get even better rewards. Definitely invite anyone you see. There's a couple different ways to do this, so I'll show you here. First is, if you can actually just click on the person, you can do that, and then you can see in the menu the third icon, the one that looks like a group full of people with a plus sign, that's how you'd invite them to a party. Alternatively, on the right side of the screen, you can see the blue icon over here that looks like a party. If you click that, you can click invite to party and then nearby heroes will come up. So you can see here, it found someone who's nearby and you can shoot them an invite. And if they accept, you guys can both progress much quicker. Simple as that. Tip number five, 
don't assume new ability versions are superior. And yet again, this one's pretty straightforward. As you can see, as you're leveling up, you will essentially unlock new versions of abilities within the same ability class and the same ability name. So for example, looking at Photon Energy, there's Photon Energy, Photon Absorption, Photon Explosion, Explosive Flow, and Photon Overflow. Those are all different versions of the Photon Energy skill. And as you can see here, I am using the second version. Don't make the mistake of just assuming that the newer version is better. In reality, they do different things. And so of all the different versions of this ability, the second ability is the only one that grants a significant amount of defense to Captain Marvel, and it is actually her only ability that grants her a bunch of defense. I think this particular ability is invaluable. So it's definitely not the case that the new versions are just better, so don't fall into that trap. Read the descriptions. Tip number six, channel swap and zone swap when hunting for most wanted targets. This is a really nifty trick when you're on the hunt for a particular most wanted target. So I'll show you right here. As you can see, there are currently no most wanted targets spawned on the Cursed Forest. However, you can actually change channels. So you can see there's a channel list above the mini map. So we'll click that there. And we can actually swap to channel two or channel three. We'll go ahead and do that now. And what you're essentially doing is joining a new instance of the same zone and it may change up which most wanted targets are present. As you can see, Loki, the prime target, happens to be spawned on this one. Very lucky if you're hunting Loki, and he's very rare and difficult to come by, so yeah, that's pretty lucky. Now, if you try to switch channels again after you've just done a channel swap, you'll get a message like this, which will say, please try again in 39 seconds. There's a one minute lockout. You can switch channels immediately the first time, but then there's a lockout but there's even a way around that. If you click the minimap and go to a different zone, you can switch zones immediately. So we'll just pick Sand Earth, pick a random one, go here. And this is gonna drop us in a random instance of this zone in Sand Earth. And then as soon as we land back in Sand Earth, you can click the minimap and go right back and have avoided that lockout. So if you do it right after you've swapped and you didn't find what you're looking for, you can do this. Another option is you can hunt two targets at once and basically just keep bouncing between the zones and each time it drops you in, it will drop you into a random instance. So you can see now we're back in channel one of Cursed Forest. So you can keep bouncing and getting dropped in between two different zones, just keep getting in different instances. So especially if you're hunting two targets at once, you can save a lot of time and essentially cover all your bases. Tip number seven, set your threshold for health potions and use your enhancers efficiently. I'll show you what I mean. A lot of people aren't aware that this is an option. If you go into settings, you can essentially set a threshold. You can see it right up at the top, automatic recovery item use, disable 25%, 50%, 75%. That is the health increment, at which point your character will automatically consume a health potion. If you want them healing right away, obviously 75%, as soon as they dip below that, they'll pop one. You can put it at 50 or 25. And if you just want to handle it manually, then you can, of course, put it on disable. Additionally, just because it's kind of related, there are enhancers. So you can see here we have some high grade critical damage, high grade attack enhancer, and you can click use and they last for five minutes. But because they only last for five minutes, it's easy to forget when they wear off and not notice. However, you can see that little looks like a replay button next to them. And if you go ahead and click that, you'll see here that essentially tells the game as soon as that five minutes is up, go ahead and consume another one. You can turn that off at any time, but by using that, you can make sure that all of your enhancers stay up continuously while you're doing tough content. Finally, tip number eight, add 50 friends ASAP. And you may be thinking, well, I, I don't have 50 friends. That's fine. Literally just add anyone you see. So if we go to friends here, you can see there's suggested friends and it'll just generate a list for you. Anyone you see at the Omega Flight HQ, just fill up that friends list immediately. And it's because every day you can send out friendship tokens and every day you can receive friendship tokens. And the game encourages you to do this with those pesky red dots. And you can essentially spend that friendship currency, I'll show you right here, in the store. You can buy a lot of good stuff. You can literally buy gear, you can buy Convergium, you can buy cores, 
and you can get synchronized particles. And this is literally just from a single click to send some stuff to your friends, and have them send some stuff to you. The quicker you can amass this currency, the better. So go make some friends. All right, so there you have it. If you found any of these tips particularly helpful and you didn't already know them, let me know in the comments below. Additionally, if there's anything you've discovered that you really think people should know, leave any good tips that you have for other players in the comment section. But otherwise, that is all I've got for you guys today. So thank you guys very, very much for checking out this video. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and duck and move. And I will see you guys real soon. Until next time, peace!